This is Selma Schimmel for the group room at the Community Oncology Alliance meeting in Las Vegas. Our discussions continue now with the COA board president, Dr. David Eagle. Uh, Dr. Eagle is a medical oncologist at the Lake Norman Hematology Oncology Practice in North Carolina. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here because what I really want to talk to you about are the goals for COA in 2012 and beyond. Why is COA important for community oncologists? And sort of this role that we've been talking about uh, off air about mm -hmm. community oncologists involved in clinical trials. Sure. Well, the, the, uh, the goals for COA in 2012, you know, continue to be centered on, on explaining why community practices, you know, have value in our, in, our, in our modern cancer delivery system. You know, we treat probably about 80% of the patients, cancer patients in the United States. And, and I think it's underappreciated, you know, how, how much a part of the fabric of cancer care we are. So we first need to explain that to, to, to the, the public. Um, beyond that, you know, we really need to kind of protect the delivery system for cancer patients. Uh, one of the examples of where that's become threatened is with the generic drug shortage. Uh, patients, uh, you know, I will schedule a patient for the following Monday for treatment. We'll typically order the drugs uh, several days ahead of time. And what we're finding is that sometimes these very inexpensive medications are are unavailable and all of a sudden we have to scramble and create a plan B for the patient. That can be very distressing for the patients and unfortunately sometimes a solution, the, the, an equivalent drug is not always available and that just shouldn't happen, be happening. Um, the generic drugs are, represent about 2% of the total cancer drug spending uh, and they really shouldn't be in, part, in, in short supply. So that's an example of the types of things that we uh, get involved in and one of our top priorities this year. Uh, the other goals this year uh, will be to, to continue to, to look towards reimbursement reform in a way that, that supports community cancer programs. Uh, there's been a large wave of, of closures of cancer programs over the past several years uh, and mergers into larger entities and, and I think really without any net benefit to the patients at all. So I think that needs to be looked at as well too. Um, so those are two of the things that were, were, were that are top of our priority list this year. In speaking with your executive director a bit ago, we talked about the role of patients and the importance of advocacy and the kind of collaboration that the physician community really does need now to establish and enhance mm -hmm with patients and advocates. Can you talk about that a little bit more? I think patients have the strongest voice you know, in terms of protecting the cancer delivery system. The people who have been through it know it the best and they understand the value. It's hard as a, an oncologist to ever you know, really ask any more of our patients and certainly patients under active treatment are not in a position where they can really be advocates. I think it's either their family members or cancer survivors who are in the best position to do that. Clinical trials are very expensive to conduct. Clinical trials in a community setting are, for some doctors, probably cost prohibitive. How can COA help doctors within the community make clinical trials more accessible to patients so patients don't have to travel quite as far to cancer centers? Doesn't mean that cancer centers and mm -hmm. private practice physicians cannot collaborate, mm -hmm. but certainly patients would like to see more access to clinical trials and research available in the community setting? That question just came up at the conference uh, 45 minutes ago, and I don't think there's any easy answers for that. Uh, some practices develop, some larger practices develop very comprehensive cancer uh, research programs within the practice, but those are rare, actually. Uh, in our community, the hospital system does a very good job supporting the, the research effort in the community, so private practice has been able to cooperate with the hospital systems in terms of enrolling patients on clinical trials, and it's working very well for us. Dr. Eagle, what is the message you would like your colleagues in medical oncology to, to know and hear from you now in order for them to become more involved in COA and why they need to become involved and how do they become involved? Sure. Well, COA tries to make it very easy for oncologists to interact with us. Uh, the reason we think that they need to uh, support COA is because we're defending and supporting their interests all day long. Again, like we had spoken about, uh, community oncologists have a, a tremendous investment in their education, their training, and their practices, and everything they need to do to take care of patients. And we're, we're here to, to help to defend that from policymakers that really may not understand what they need to uh, regarding the provision of cancer care. Uh, our website has, has a site that says immediate action needed, so any physician can get on any time and find out what those current advocacy issues are that need to, uh, that they can participate in. And it's, it's always just a, a, a few simple steps. 
uh, that oncologists can do to actually make a difference in terms of how their practice life is. That, that is a struggle for uh, oncologists, which is they don't know how to interact with the system, and you really can't do it as an isolated physician. You have to be part of a, a larger effort to, be, to make it worthwhile. So is COA a membership organization? We are a membership organization, but, uh, and we need the support of members to operate. Um, but whether you're a member or not, you can always go on the website and take some of the action steps that we recommend to, to help uh, advocate for certain issues. Is there a criteria for a physician practice to become a member? There, there really isn't strict criteria. I think if, as long as you're a community practice and you have an interest in participating with COA, uh, that's, that's really we're interested in. We're interested in helping anybody who who's, uh, has a community practice or trying to support. And does COA have an active relationship with ASCO? Yeah, COA has, we have a, a very good relationship with ASCO because we all need to be working together. And I think it's critical that, that all of the cancer organizations work in a coordinated fashion because we're really all working on the same problems. And so we, we do, it's very important that everybody works together in, in, uh, in close format these days. Thank you, Dr. David Eagle, COA board president. You're a medical oncologist, Lake Norman hematology oncology in North Carolina. Great. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much.